The new Nissan Z is definitely one of the most anticipated sports cars coming up in the next year. Nissan invited me to come preview it and a lot of you were asking what the difference between the proto and the production version is, so I asked them. Yeah, so surprisingly the 23Z pays a lot of those same uh, points of attention that we, uh, we launched with the Z Proto with last year and uh, really there's only a, a few subtle differences that I'll show you, but really this is about 95% of the way there that you saw from the Z Proto. Some of the biggest changes, first and foremost, starting at the front, include the front grille. So on the Z Proto, when we launched it, it had an all black tiered grille, very similar to what you see here, but what we've done is we've brightened up the grille to add additional contrast so that way it's much more predominant on the front end and you don't really lose it uh, when it's all black and then you also get that really beautiful contrast against the, the body color now um, So that's one of the key differences that you would see versus uh, you know, the Z Proto that we launched last year uh, Some of the other smaller differences are more of for the uh, the purpose of uh, Regulations, so you'll notice in the headlight We had to add the reflectors here in the front and you'll see some reflectors in the back uh, Again for regulation purposes, but otherwise the headlight is the same exact design utilizing the DTROs uh, to create uh, that same eye look that you, uh, you got in that circular design that harks back to the early 240Z. The whole headlight assembly is very much the same as the Z Proto minus just the, re the reflector. And then for this particular vehicle, with it being the performance, uh, you can see the, uh, the parking indicators on the front and you'll notice them on the rear. Uh, so those are the uh, proximity sensors. Uh, so when you're parking this, uh, you can ensure that you don't rub your front end or your back end on any uh, curb or anything like that. So those are some of the small subtle differences on the front. Now as we work your way to the side though, uh, you'll notice that the wheel is the exact same design as on the Z Proto, but now they're gunmetal. So the, the Z Proto had uh, the bronzed forged raised wheels. This now has uh, the gunmetal on the performance. If you wanted the bronze, you can still get that on our Proto spec that's limited to 240 units uh, for the US market. Uh, but one of the other key differences that a lot of people will notice is the brakes. So we've got the uh, the four piston calipers front, two piston rear, uh, versus the six piston caliper, four piston rear that was on the Z Proto. So this is uh, what you would get on your performance edition uh, with the uh, with the larger rotor versus our sport grade. Uh, but then you'll also notice they're not uh, the body color from the Z Proto. Uh, they're, they're red, so that'll be a clear indication that this is a performance spec version of our Z. This is a, uh, a 14 and a half, if I believe, uh, rotor, whereas um, the, the rotor that was found on the Z Proto uh, was our GTR brake system, which has uh, obviously about an inch larger brake rotor. That was, again, just for the Proto purposes. Um, you know, obviously that's something that you could maybe upgrade for this particular car in the future, but uh, for now, you'll get the uh, the Akibono four piston caliper front, two piston caliper rear. But as we work our way back, though, all of this body design, everything that you see here, is all directly from the Z Proto. So again, we weren't lying when we said that's what you're essentially going to see. Uh, so the katana sword is still here. The two tone paint color is still here. Although we do have a total of nine paint colors uh, coming out in the spring for the 23Z. Uh, this is one of them. This is Siren Blue. Uh, this is one of our unique paint colors as well as the Ikazuchi Yellow and our red tricoat. So a really cool paint design which hopefully you guys can see in the video. It gives it uh, a really interesting dynamic because not only does it have a pearlescent in it but it also has an abundance of metallic in it. So depending on how you see it in the light you'll see either the pearl or a mix of the pearl and the metallic. It's absolutely gorgeous in person. And as we make our way into the back, this is where we'll see a couple other subtle changes from uh, the Z Proto. So the one being the actual Z de uh, designation. So in the Z Proto, uh, we had the Fair Lady Z, uh, I guess we can call it an Easter egg. But now since uh, the, the Z is actually launched, so we have the new badge back here in the back indicating that this is for sure Z. Um, obviously, our Japan counterparts will have the, the Fair Lady nomenclature as they've had since uh, the inception of the Z car. But uh, aside from that, the rear end is very much the same as the Z Proto. Obviously, uh, the parking sensors are here, but uh, the tail lights, the rear tail light panel, everything else uh, is the same. And then one thing that you'll also notice is our spoiler back here on the back. That's uh, exclusive for the performance grade. 
So you'll get this beautiful rear spoiler as well to go with your performance grade. And then the last but not least, this is a similarity that we wanted to make sure we uh, maintained between the, uh, the Z Proto and the actual production version, which is the Easter egg that says since 1969 on the back window. So that's uh, a really, really cool touch that we wanted to ensure that we kept uh, from the Z Proto. So every time you look through your, uh, your rear view mirror, you'll see since 1969. And uh, it's just a, a cool little Easter egg. This is very true to what we, uh, we launched last year with the Z Proto. And uh, the production version that we launched in August of this year has been an absolute hit. We're excited to bring this car out today to the Japanese Classic Car Show here in Anaheim. And uh, yeah, we look forward to getting these out into the marketplace in the spring of 22, starting at around $40,000 for our sport grade. And uh, more information will come out as we get a little closer to the spring. I asked what are some of the key differences between the performance and the sport version? Uh, so the sport uh, is still very, very highly equipped. There's still a lot of great features. Uh, for those looking to get into the Z entry market, uh, but what really sets the, uh, the performance and the sport is, is definitely uh, the braking and the, the wheels. So you'll get your Acubano brakes when you move from the sport to the performance. You'll get the 19-inch wheels. Uh, you'll get the mechanical clutch type limited slip differential. Uh, in addition to that, though, you'll also get that rear spoiler that we mentioned. You'll get a front lip. And then you'll also get, from an interior point of view, uh, the leather interior as well as the nine inch uh, center display versus the eight inch. But aside from that, you still get your 400 horsepower VR30 V6 twin turbo. You'll still either get a six speed manual transmission or a nine speed automatic. So at the end of the day, you're still getting an amazing value regardless of which grade you get. So on the performance grade, you'll get a uh, limited slip differential, whereas on the sport, you'll get an open diff. Uh, but we're, we're going away from the VSLD uh, electronically controlled and we're moving towards uh, with, the, with the new 23 with the clutch type limited slip. Yeah, we're, uh, <laughs> we're really excited about this car. Yeah, that's one of the key differences that we, uh, you know, we listened to our, you know, our fans. When we were uh, touring around with the Z Proto, a lot of the feedback was uh, we, we'd like to see a little bit more contrast. We'd like to see some differentiation. Sure, when you see it in person, you could tell. But in pictures, it wasn't so obvious. And now with this, uh, with this change from listening to our, our enthusiasts, it's really done a number to really allow for that differentiation on the front end. Uh, so on the front end, so the heat exchangers are actually on the top of the engine, uh, very similar to our, our previous VR30 design that you would see in our Q50, Q60 Red Sports. Up here though, you've got the oil cooler, uh, obviously your AC condenser, your radiator, as well as uh, a couple other cooling uh, features. But aside from that though, the heat exchangers are found underneath the hood. Is the new Z a car that enthusiasts are gonna be able to modify? Yeah, and, and you know, again, this is a blank canvas for all of our enthusiasts who, who like to modify and make their car their own. This is a perfect example of why Z has always been such an enthusiast car because you can make it your own. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of room for, you know, for anyone to take it and make it their own. It's interesting because you look around and, and you see all of the different you know, Z cars and how everyone has made their Z their own. And so we, we had to keep that DNA alive. So one way to do that, it was you know, to ensure that you know, we brought out a, a, a perfect canvas for that tunability, but also a package for those who can just get in it, drive it and enjoy it just how it is. So it's, it's a perfect, uh, you know, duality between the two. If you're enjoying this video of the new Nissan Z, please give this a thumbs up and consider subscribing. It really helps this video get out to more people. And now let's check out the interior. So this interior in blue is absolutely stunning. So this has got leather with Alcantara inserts. This is the performance version of the car. And so the interior is a little bit uh, updated, or rather I should say, you get a few more features with the performance version versus the, uh, the sport version where you're gonna get cloth. So this has got these beautiful suede slash Alcantara inserts in the doors. Of course, we've got a, a six-speed manual transmission with an Exidy shifter. Material just feels nice and soft. This is relatively soft touch, but this is nice and soft feeling. The plastics here. Soft touch, it's not hard, I like that. So you can adjust the lumbar support here, little part right here, 
and this adjusts the uh, the front bolster. And these are power adjustable seats in this version. Transmission feels feels pretty nice. Kind of a short throw. So we've got three gauges here. It's a little bit odd. We've got boost. We've got turbo speed. And then we have a voltmeter. These are sort of an odd choice for gauges, quite frankly. I don't think I've seen a voltmeter in a long, long time. And turbo speed, not entirely sure what that's all about. So under the hood, here is the V6 twin turbo engine. It's a three liter VRDD TT, makes 400 horsepower, 350 pound feet of torque from about 1600 RPM up. So you got the torque down pretty low should behave like a torquey turbo engine. And I'm sure the tuning community is gonna get into this thing too and start doing some interesting things to see how much more power we can get out of this. Certainly with the Supra, a big part of the community has been tuning and that engine in the Supra has been able to make ridiculous amounts of power. So with this Nissan coming in at quite a bit less money, it's gonna be interesting to see how the tuner community takes to this car and what you can do with it. Of course, the big thing that sort of separates this from the Supra, well, there's a couple big things. One, of course, is the fact that this is all Japanese. Other thing is that this is not German, and, of course, it gets a manual transmission, which, of course, the Supra does not have, and that's one of the big complaints about the Supra. So here we've got a manual transmission, and the pricing on this is starting at about $40,000 according to Nissan on Twitter. So that's where you're gonna start. It's gonna go up from there. So this isn't really a competitor in terms of price for the GR86, which people have been talking about. The GR86 starts at about $28,000. So this is quite a bit more, not quite in the same price class, but this is very competitive with the four-cylinder Supra, which starts at about $44,000. I think you're also gonna have some competition from the domestics. If you want to get into the Mustang or the Camaro, you're going to be starting at a little less than $40,000 for a V8. Very different package, very different sort of idea and philosophy behind those cars. But from a pure price point, they are going to be competitive. If you enjoyed this overview of the new Nissan Z, please consider subscribing. My name is Eric. See you in the next video.